Hey guys, before we hop into today's video, I just want to let you know that I have partnered up with Beatopia, which is a really cool platform that's dedicated towards teaching artists and producers industry tips, tricks, all that good stuff that will help you grow. They pretty much align with our brand and the type of stuff that we do. Now, we are doing a giveaway of a Noemi TLM-102 condenser microphone, and all you have to do is follow Beatopia and they will announce the winner in about a month. Now, the link is in the description below. Just go over there, check them out, give them a follow, tell them I sent you, and you could potentially have the chance at winning this $700 microphone, which I'm gonna be real with you, I didn't know microphones cost that much before this. And if this is what artists are going through, this is the type of stuff you have to spend your money on, then I feel you, bro. Music is expensive, but the mic almost made me feel like I should be a rapper. So, like I said, if you're interested in that, if you want a chance of winning that mic, just go and follow Beatopia on Instagram. Once again, I will put that link in the description below. Make sure you let them know that I sent you. And other than that, let's get into today's video. What's going on? It's your man, Kobe. Welcome to the Digital Dash, where I'll be giving you tips on how to market your songs and get those numbers booming. Now today, what I want to do is give you a couple of tips that if you do these right, should make any promoter that you come in contact love you. Now, I throw local events here in Atlanta. I have a festival that me and my friends have grown from the ground up called Blue Summer. We've been doing it for about two going on three years. And just throughout that entire process, I have seen a lot of things that artists have done well that have made us love them and want to work with them again. And I've seen things that a lot of artists do wrong that just completely turns you off from their artists and makes you never want to deal with them again and never put them on any type of concert, showcase, festival, whatever. So for those of you who are doing shows, who are wondering to yourselves, hmm, how can I make a good impression on a promoter so that I get these show opportunities again? Or just for those of you who are planning, you know, want to be in the best positions for when they finally do start to get those opportunities, this is the video for you. And I'm willing to bet that if any promoters out there watching this video, let me know if you agree with some of these things, because I really do feel like these are universal across all promoters, not just me. But before we get into all of that, come and follow me on Instagram. I make sure to put my ad name in the description below. Come talk to me, come engage with me, come give me some video ideas, all of that good stuff. Now, with that being said, let's get right into it. Now, the first thing is to make sure that you are organized and timely. The last thing that any promoter wants is to be held up on a flyer or to be held up on some type of promotional video because you are taking too long to get them back the files that they need. Now, I will recommend that you have a folder already created that has any um, high quality photos, all of your show versions of your tracks, meaning your songs without the vocals over top, and just any additional information that they might need from you ready to go in a zip folder that you can send to the promoter as soon as you get booked for the opportunity. And make sure that you are responding to their messages on whatever platform that you guys choose to talk on, text, email, Instagram, whatever it is, make sure that you're looking out for messages from that promoter and responding back to them in a timely manner. Because like I said, when it comes to events, everything is time sensitive. We're trying to get things out on time so we can start promos on time, we can get the ad dollars moving, we got shit lined up. We need you to be organized and for you to get back to us as fast as you possibly can. Another thing, another big tip is promote the damn show. You would be surprised at how many artists get booked for these shows, they get booked for these events, the flyer drops, the promo video drops, and it's just crickets. They don't talk about it. They don't put it in front of their audiences. And then when the show happens, they're mad at the promoter because only eight people are in the crowd for them. And it's like, it's your fault. You didn't tell anybody you were gonna be here. Now, when we book artists, the understanding agreement is that, hey, we're going to put you in front of our audience in hopes that you put us in front of your audience. It's supposed to be a mutually beneficial arrangement where we both grow and we both get engagement and awareness off of us helping each other out, right? But if you're not holding up your end of the bargain, you're not promoting the show, then we or any promoter starts to feel like you're leeching off of their movement. You're not really trying to contribute to what's going on. And like I said, that's huge, right? Like, how do you expect your audience to know you're going to be at a show if you're not even promoting it? And like I said, man, you will be surprised at how hard it is to get people to do things that they say they want to get paid to do, but then they can't even do it when the time comes for it. So I know every promoter has had this situation before. Like, we've had big artists. And I mean like huge artists who would not promote the show. And we just have to stay on their ass about it. Sometimes you gotta like threaten certain things to get shit done. And it really is a pet peeve of any promoter when once again, we're kind of looking to you to bring people out or looking to your audience to bring people out. Now, I have once heard like a veteran promoter say, it's not on the artist to necessarily promote the show and bring people out. I don't necessarily agree with that because I feel like why do the event or why do the show if you have no intentions to promote? Like I personally would much rather 
rather book a mid-sized artist or a smaller artist who is going to go hard with the promotions for it than to book like a big artist who's not going to tell people they're going to be there because then it makes us look like we're a scam like it's not even really going to happen and who wants people to think that their event is a scam nobody no promoter and third thing make sure that you're on time for sound check and your set if they tell you that sound check is at 6 30 get there at 6 15. they tell you that your set is at 9 45 get there at like 9 15 the latest once again no promoter wants to be running around the venue during that busy hectic night looking for you because you're on stage in three minutes and no one has seen you for the last 45 minutes this is really big and if you realize it the big theme of a lot of this stuff is just professionalism. Being professional in these spaces with these promoters will have you getting looked at in a much more positive light than the artists who are not professional. Because once again, this is a job. I'm doing my job in the hopes that you do your job the best and just the best that we both do our jobs, the best the event would turn out. And you know, the more likely I will want to book you and work with you again. Another thing is to make sure you give a good performance for the show. Now I get it. Not every artist really has promotional experience to where they may give the best show that they can. Some of you are still figuring it out, figuring your sets out. And if you are an artist who hasn't really performed that much, let the promoter know up front. Say, hey, this is like my second or my third show, but I am going to do this to the best of my abilities. We will appreciate you for that. We may not always feel you, but we will at least appreciate you for it. Now, I also know that a good show is subjective. So just some general tips for making sure that you have a good performance or a good set is to one, don't rap or sing over your vocals. We hate it. Everyone hates it. No one thinks it's lit. No one thinks it's cool. Stop rapping over your vocals. It makes you look unprofessional and very amateurish. And remember, when you're in the music industry, you're not just competing with local artists. You're competing with artists as big as Drake. And they're doing it to the highest degree. And that's a very small thing that every artist can do that makes them look professional, is to rap over a performance a version of their track. Performance version is pretty much just your song without the lead vocals. You can leave like ad libs and backgrounds and the stuff, but you shouldn't be rapping over the main chorus or the main verse. The second thing that you can do is to engage with the crowd. No one likes a stale performer. No one likes the performer that acts like they're not here. So incorporating skits or routines or just conversation points that allow you to pull the audience into your set is a huge win and a huge plus. We once booked an artist by the name of Jordan Bell. And I remember like halfway through his set, he bought like, he brought like three of his fans in the crowd onto stage and had like a backflip contest on stage. And that shit was crazy. Like the audience loved it. We loved it. The fans loved being a part of it. And it just took his set to a different level compared to the other artists who just were like there, right? And another big thing is to, if you're performing in front of a crowd and they're not responding the way that you would like them to respond, do not berate the crowd. No one wants to hear you say, oh, you guys are lame, you guys suck. No one wants to hear that because once again, we spent our money to be entertained by you, not the other way around. So if it's just not striking, perform your set, take it in stride, get some feedback, and then focus on making sure your next show is better. Outside of that, good performance really does come down to you, your energy, and just the way you put your sets together. But the better your performance, the better your set, the more we want to book you and put you on shows again. And lastly, support other events that the promoter has going on, whether you're on them or not. So if you see me post a flyer or you see me putting together some other event, come out, buy a ticket, you know what I'm saying? Show some love, promote the event on your stories or in your other socials. That goes a long way because then that shows the promoter that you are an artist who is genuinely trying to build a long-term relationship with us and not just another artist trying to leech off of the movement and the audience that we have built with our platform. Because that is how a lot of you guys come off. When you are jumping into the DMs of promoters, you're jumping into you know the promoter's face, trying to get certain opportunities. When we can, we can smell the bullshit, like we can smell the cap. We can smell that you are not going to hold up your ends of the bargains with certain things and that you, once again, don't really care about us. You just want exposure in our platform. Like I said, man, we've gotten some wild DMs before. We've had people walk up to us and ask us wild stuff. And the main thing that we always take away from it is, man, you don't really love me, bro. You just want the clout, bro. Like, you're not really here for me. Now, like I said, all of these things pretty much tie back to professionalism and relationship building. Two key things that are huge in the music industry and especially huge with building with promoters who can potentially put you on local shows, bigger shows, festivals, or even tours sometimes, depending on what type of relationships and connections those different promoters have. And once again, I feel like these things are universal to any promoter. And if you do these things and you do them well, then, you know, promoters should love you. They should want to fuck with you and put you on shows again. And, you know, hopefully that opens up other show opportunities 
doing this for you. Now, I would love to hear what you guys think. Do you think that these things are actually feasible? Do you feel like these things should be done? If you are a promoter or anyone who throws and shows and books artists in your city, do you agree with me? Are there any extra things that you think I should have added to this video that you would love to see artists do or that artists have done that made you want to work with them again? Like I said, drop those in the comment section below or feel free to hit me up on Instagram or Twitter. Now, other than that, if you feel like you learned anything today, please like and share this video. Hit those post notifications as well as I wouldn't want you to miss anything. Once again, my name is Corey and I'll see you next time.